Today we find ourselves at the Kehoe House, a grand Queen Anne mansion on Columbia Square, where the past is very much alive, whispering through the halls and stirring in the night. The Kehoe House was built in 1892 for William Kehoe, an Irish immigrant who rose to prominence in Savannah. His journey from humble beginnings to one of the city's most influential businessmen is etched into the very bricks of this grand home. Kehoe made his fortune in iron, and fittingly, he adorned his home with cast iron railings, elaborate window moldings, and Corinthian columns, showcasing his mastery for all of Savannah to see. This was not just a home, it was a monument to his success. Kehoe spent $25,000 to build it. Though known as a small man in stature, William Kehoe's presence was anything but minuscule. His granddaughter, Anne, remembered him in an article from Savannah News Press Magazine in 1969 as a man who stood tall because he knew his own worth. He had a poor Irish upbringing, which made him have a soft heart for those less fortunate than himself. Author James Caskey shares in his book, Haunted Savannah, America's Most Spectral City, the story of Woodrow, a handyman with a fondness for a strong drink. Woodrow was often found at the Brown Farm, which was a work farm for those who committed minor offenses. One day, Kehoe went to the farm looking for his old friend, only to learn that Woodrow had given his last name as Kehoe. Rather than feeling insulted, William felt a strange sense of pride, perhaps recognizing a kindred spirit in the man. William married a woman named Anne Flood, and the two started building a family. The Kiko family was a large one, ten children, filling the mansion with laughter and life. But where there is joy, sometimes there is sorrow. A persistent legend haunts the Kehoe house, one that chills the blood even today. The legend goes that twin children, part of the Kehoe clan, died tragically while playing in a chimney. Their spirits, some say, are still here. The fireplaces have all been blocked and decorated with angelic figures, perhaps as a tribute to those lost little ones. But guests swear they hear the faint laughter of children in the halls, and some even report waking to the sensation of tiny hands tugging at their clothes. There's no documentation to prove whether or not this legend is true, but there's plenty of people who've reported spooky activity. Kasky also shares some haunting experiences in the hotel. Room 201 and 203 are notorious among guests and staff alike. In room 201, a guest awoke to a gentle touch, as if someone were softly stroking her cheek, thinking it was her husband, she opened her eyes, only to find a young child caressing her face. She blinked, and in an instant, the child was gone. In room 203, two sisters reported a strange occurrence. One of them awoke feeling an unnatural pressure beside her on the bed. Looking over, she saw her sister sound asleep. But beside her lay a faint impression as if someone had been sitting there, watching over her as she slept. Shadows linger here, refusing to fade with the dawn. Some have even claimed to smell perfume in their rooms and down the dark corridors of the house. And it's not just guests who encounter the otherworldly here. Kasky also mentions one morning a front desk employee heard the doorbell ring even though she could clearly see through the cut glass door that no one was there. She dismissed it as a glitch. But when it rang a second time and a third time, she became unsettled. 
Then suddenly, the front door unlocked and opened by itself. In fact, all the doors in the house had unlocked. The message was clear. The spirits here do not like to be kept waiting. Tour guides have had spooky experiences too. Some have heard children's voices clear as day while walking close to the Kehoe house. There's even been reports of entire tour groups hearing unexplained voices. Some believe that the children's energy in the house is a residual haunting, which is where the energy is trapped in a location. It's a sort of imprint or record of events that replays over and over again. In this type of haunting, the entities do not engage with others and aren't aware of their surroundings. Given the stories I've heard and read about, I think it's possible the Kehoe House has both intelligent spiritual activity, meaning they engage with the living and are aware of their surroundings, as well as residual imprints. The final macabre twist is that the house was once a funeral home. The amount of energy from grieving families would certainly be accumulated in the parlors downstairs. For sensitive individuals, I wonder what sort of energy they'd pick up on simply by walking through the doors. I've never been inside the house, but I've often admired it from the outside. Today, I journeyed there and tuned in for the very first time. As I walked on the sidewalk near the house, I was initially drawn to an uneasy feeling coming from the basement. I wouldn't exactly call it negative, but it wasn't positive either. As I continued around the house, I felt a very loving, warm, and comforting presence on the verandas, a very feminine presence. When I tried to focus inside the house, I felt a mix of many energies, so much so that it was difficult to distinguish and center on any one specifically. It's a very energetically loud place, if that makes sense. Children are definitely present. I felt their energy most specifically on the stairs, but they do seem to be everywhere in the house, especially in the downstairs areas. So that's my reading of the place. The Kehoe House is a place where the past and present intertwine, where history leaves its mark, not only in stone and iron, but also in the shadows that linger. I'm Vanessa K. Eccles, and you've been listening to Haunted Savannah, a Fable Collective production, with music by Katie Coffrin. Until next time, thank you for listening. <laughs>